Hello, Mr. President, can you hear me? Now I hear you. Now it's clear because yeah. I was waiting and it didn't come yeah. through. So. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, Mr. President, my name is Babur Sheikh. I am the Director for International Development, Kothan, Pakistan and Dubai. And uh, I'm very delighted to have you as our international guest speaker today. And it's a moment of uh, great delight for uh, all of us here. So first of all, uh, I would like to request all the participants at the moment uh, who are available here and across our uh, network in Pakistan to accord you a very, very warm welcome. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Thomas Gugler. President World Chefs. So I have to say, first of all, thank you very, very much. I mean, to Ahmed, definitely, and uh, to, to, to you and to the entire team, Baba, yeah. that um, you are uh, making it possible, actually, for me, first of all, to, to be your students. And uh, secondly, that uh, Gotham is. Uh, uh, so active all around the globe and supporting its uh, students, uh, mainly from Pakistan, which I believe this is very, very important, especially nowadays. Uh, education definitely plays a very, very big role. Uh, all the parameters has been set into a completely different direction, which yeah. means that uh, the normal schooling uh, it's been uh, very much, uh, I so would say, focused on online teaching for the moment due to COVID-19. Yeah. And this has uh, been changed the world entirely for the time being, at least. Uh, it will not go back as it was before completely, but definitely we are all thinking positive and getting uh, our I also would say trade, our as so beautiful hospitality industry coming back to glory and to shine um, after COVID has been at least controlled. Yeah, I'm, uh, in and let me give you a, a brief introduction of uh, uh, the audience at the moment available with us. Uh, Mr. President, we have the executive members of the Chefs Association of Pakistan, because today this event is being hosted by the Chefs Association of Pakistan, which is the National Association of Chefs here in Pakistan. So uh, we have uh, the corporate vice president, Mr. Wakar Lias Khan with us. We have the executive members of the Chefs Association of Pakistan. We have the uh, national culinary team of Pakistan available uh, with us, the members of this uh, national culinary team. And we also have a national women culinary team because uh, we have worked a lot. The association has worked a lot on uh, the gender equality also because uh, we want to give our women also the, the opportunities to contribute uh, in this uh, wonderful area of uh, you know, culinary arts and the culinary industry. So we have uh, uh, the uh, women culinary team also available with us here. We have the culinary trainers at the moment who will be uh, listening to you and uh, watching you. And then we have the students uh, of uh, culinary arts and hospitality management who will be joining this session at uh, various venues. And let me tell you that uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, our 15 branches of Kotham aligned for this uh, wonderful session with you. Uh, they are in different cities at the moment. Uh, they are in Lahore, in Karachi, in uh, Multan, Bahawalpur, and Rahim Yar Khan. They are in Sahiwal and Okada. They are in Faslabad. These are the cities in Pakistan. They are in Gujranwala. They are in Islamabad, which is the federal capital of uh, Pakistan. They are in Rawalpindi. So we have got, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of uh, students and professionals uh, online with you, and they'll be capitalizing on, on this uh, great moment, the talk you'll be holding with them. And uh, 
I would like my uh, executive members of the uh, association and the National Culinary Team of Pakistan members and the women culinary team uh, to please stand up uh, and uh, uh, be introduced with you, please. I hope you can uh, see these people uh, behind me who are standing at the moment. And uh, yes, I can definitely. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Aplok, the Shri Prakash. And now, Mr. Mr. Googler, um, let me give my participants a thumbnail sketch of uh, your uh, profile because. Uh, it is a very, very comprehensive profile. And for me, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, describe in a very short time, but uh, I would like to highlight a few very important areas of your, uh, your career in this uh, culinary industry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have Mr. Uh, Thomas A. Googler, who is the president of uh, World Chefs at the moment. He's running a multi-million dollar organization and 12 million professional chefs globally. Uh, because as you know, uh, World Chefs has more than 100 countries uh, on its platform. I mean, 100, uh, the national associations from uh, more than 100 countries are member of the World Chefs. And uh, uh, by virtue of this membership, there are uh, millions of chefs who are member of the World Chefs also. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I mean, uh, you have won more than 750 uh, trophies, awards, and uh, prizes uh, globally. And very interestingly, uh, Mr. Thomas Googler uh, knows nine languages. This is amazing. This is wonderful. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Master's degree in the culinary arts and a lot of diplomas and certificates. Uh, he is the executive master chef, in fact. And previously, he has served as the continental director of the World Chefs uh, for the region of uh, Africa and Middle East. Uh, he has been uh, teaching at various uh, hotel management and vocational schools and colleges. He is the member of German Chamber of Industry, Commerce, and Trade. He's the winner of the Cooking Olympics and uh, world champion. Wonderful. He's, uh, <laughs> he's certified wax judge in A category. And there are countless memberships. That's amazing. Memberships with different uh, associations, uh, around the globe, various uh, forums of the culinary arts uh, in the world. Uh, this is a very, very long list. And then he is the holder of the American Culinary Federation Honorary Lifetime Award. He has been a guest professor for uh, numerous universities globally, which includes China, Taiwan, Poland, France, Germany, and Turkey. And then he has uh, the privilege to serve the dignitaries. I mean, the head of states and the presidents and prime ministers uh, while being in this uh, industry. He has uh, uh, the, the honor of uh, serving famous uh, showbiz stars, the sports stars and icons. Uh, he has organized exceptional <coughs> events uh, around the globe. And um, I mean, he has uh, served the government officials and so on and so forth. I mean, and he's uh, uh, the owner and chairman of uh, TAG, Exclusive Culinary Events Globally. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was a thumbnail sketch actually. There, there is a lot more that we uh, can uh, discuss about Mr. Googler, uh, but uh, uh, I try to be precise as much as possible uh, to give a brief introduction of Mr. Thomas Googler. 
Mr. President, uh, let me give you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah, let me give you a very uh, brief. Uh, 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 a, a brief about the Chefs Association of Pakistan and its uh, activities. Chefs Association of Pakistan is uh, uh, working actively uh, uh, across Pakistan. It is uh, engaged in national uh, events and it is also engaged in the international events. It usually participates in the international competitions also. So it keeps organizing uh, various kind of uh, competitions and uh, events, uh, which include uh, the, the competitions of uh, <coughs> professional chefs and uh, the students also. Uh, it organized uh, uh, annual uh, competitions uh, in which uh, different international teams were also invited here in Pakistan. Uh, because of this COVID, we could not organize this event, but this is called uh, uh, Pakistan International Culinary Festival, where we invite uh, the professional chefs teams here in Pakistan uh, to compete in different categories. And this has been uh, a wonderful event. And hopefully, uh, once things are uh, settled uh, in terms of the COVID-19, we will resume this event once again. And we usually have uh, 10 to 12 countries participating uh, in these uh, professional competitions. Then we organize uh, master classes for the uh, culinary trainers and professional chefs. They include the culinary uh, students also. And we have National Culinary Team of Pakistan, as I already explained. And then we uh, work with Nestle also. Uh, Nestle is our corporate uh, uh, partner in different activities. Uh, we worked on the food champ at uh, a huge mall here uh, where a lot of uh, professional chefs and students were engaged to participate in this uh, event. And then uh, we participated in uh, a competition in Uzbekistan. Uh, we participated in China, China Cuisine Association, uh, invited the National Culinary Team of Pakistan to participate in in a competition there uh, in 2019, which was a huge event. And uh, then a, a lot of other activities are uh, an ongoing feature of the Chefs Association of Pakistan, uh, uh, which is done uh, mostly in collaboration with uh, Kotham, which is College of Tourism and Hotel Management. So Mr. President, uh, uh, Without consuming uh, more time, I would like uh, you uh, to start your conversation with our audience. Thank you very much. Uh, Baba, thank you very, very much for your introduction. I mean, it's uh, uh, very well done and I believe uh, it's really difficult to um, get the things all rolling together as uh, it's a kind of a write-up which is not so easy to comprehend in such a way. But you did fantastic and I'm very, very thankful for that. Now, dear students, for me, definitely a very great pleasure being here online with you today and uh, talking definitely about your future. That's the key element, as we always say. As you have been heard, I have been lived all around the world and I traveled 189 countries, which basically is nearly all the world. It's just some very, very few countries missing, which you can count on two hands, which I believe is something which made me think a little bit different about the culinary field, about the direction of the world and people who are actually the assets of the world. We, as human beings, as we all know, pretend to be and are called the most intelligent creatures on the world. But definitely, we also have a lot of mistakes and failures. Sometimes in situations, in situations where one of them, for example, is 
ending up in COVID-19. For me, cooking is art. Cooking is my life. Not only cooking, the hospitality industry in total. And I just can tell you, it is simply amazing, this field where you are working in. Due to this fast experiences I had all around the world, definitely I have to say, always open your mind. Be always ready for a challenge and take one thing out of all what you are working and directing it to your career. Your career has to be based on several things, but make sure you don't judge according to a race, a belief, a gender, or definitely a color, because we are all born naked and we all go naked. And your key element should always be the world of hospitality and be a good human being. We as human beings have ignored signs of the nature for, I so would say, weeks, months, years, and decades, which COVID-19 shows us and showed us very clear. There is something bigger than us, which puts us into our, I so would say, limits. Definitely the world wasn't ready for something like a pandemic in this, I so would say, spectrum and size. But definitely what you all have to know is you have to live with it. Like you had to live with cancer, like you had to live with AIDS, like you have to live your daily life. There will be no turning back the time. You have to be open-minded and definitely positive. Positive in a way of thinking for your future. Now, I had a lot of people who talked to me because they was very worried and they are worried about their future. And I just can tell you one thing, and this is my personal view of the entire story. People will be always hungry. People always want to have food. And it will not be replaced by tablets and pills and whatever. Because our human body definitely needs energy like a machine. If your car has no petrol, it doesn't run. And it's exactly the same with a human body. If you don't give it enough food, liquid, it won't run. At least it will not run well, and at the end it will fail. So always make sure that you treat your body as well very, very right. And think of the next, that you all have a vision and a mission. Your mission is definitely with the hospitality industry to make others happy. That requires always a smile and definitely the interest to develop yourself further and further. You have been signed on with Cotham, a very, very well reputed, I so would say, faculty system around Pakistan and around the world. Thank you to all the executive board and the special thanks. Definitely goes to my personal friend, Ahmed Shafiq, who uh, is a great believer in all of you, is a great believer in the organization. And I know you all together can make it happen. As well, Baba, thank you so much for taking these efforts and getting me on a Zoom call, that I have the opportunity to talk to these young, fantastic students. Now, how do you see your future? That's a very, very good question. And I believe for the time being, no one can answer that to 100%, because there are a lot of uncertain, I so would say, factors in the field and in the room which uh, can't be answered right now. But I'm just telling you one thing. You all dedicated and passionate to support the hospitality industry. That way you 
are sitting in these classrooms and want to be professional culinarians. A personal advice for me, definitely, as I said before, I was traveling the world. I was a young chef going through all the spectrums of what you can dream of. I was doing spa hotels, I was doing fine dining, I was going into five, six, seven star hotels, I was doing all inclusive clubs, I was in the hospitality field of medicine, so I worked even in hospitals, it was uh, the best hospital in the world, or at least uh, a, a flagship of medicine. I opened it from scratch. I was in the airline industry producing hundreds thousands of meals a day. So basically I went through all the segments of the industry and I became a key element player of this field. And finally I ended up becoming a world chef's president. Elected by all the countries around the world in majority, which means it's a position which you cannot buy which you cannot actually uh, get. You just have to be elected. It's like in a very, very big democracy where this kind of uh, politics and uh, I would so say direction has been set. World Chefs is an organization which is completely out of politics because I believe we only should concentrate and focus on our chefs. And as I always say, the power of the white jacket. It's a big word, but this white jacket can open doors, which sometimes keys, money, and any other thing can't open. Because food always goes through your heart and through your soul. And with good food, you make friends. And these friends definitely can support you. Talking about education, education for me is the pillar of your future, is the pillar of the next generations and definitely not only that, education is the fundament of your success. It might be for you not always easy to sit in the classroom and listen to your teachers because your mind sometimes is somewhere else. But I'm telling you, every opportunity you are missing puts you two steps backwards. You have, during your young age, a very great opportunity in learning. While you are in a university or in a school or wherever, you are allowed to make mistakes. You shouldn't, but you are allowed to, because that means schooling and learning. Hopefully you always learn out of these mistakes because later on, when you go into the professional side of business, you will be measured on your achievements and not on your failures. Because if you do too many mistakes, you might run out of business very, very soon. As long as you are an employee and work for a big company, it's still a different ball game. But as soon as you run your own business, Every mistake hurts your wallet and hurts your image. Don't think about the money, think about an image. And this image can make you shine or fail. So always try to achieve the best what you can. I know you are very young. I was a young boy. I was sitting once in school rooms and classrooms like you are sitting now. And sometimes you might think what these teachers are talking to me about. Why they are like this? They are like this because they are basing all their knowledge on experience. And this experience, what they have in knowledge, they want to give to you and to the next generation. As when I became a World Chefs President, I had a lot of visions and I still have a lot of visions. I have been re-elected, it's my second term. So if everything goes well, I'm running the organization eight years, which is quite young and I'm most probably the youngest president ever. But I think of something else. If you 
students, ladies and gentlemen, always assure that your positive energy is with you. The future will be yours. When I came into position, one of my dreams was definitely, because I seen a lot of competitions, I was the trainer of the German national cooking team. The team Germany was very successful. There was numerous times Olympic winner, world champion and whatever. And the key always was training, 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 training. Without training, you can't be really good and successful. But I seen there was so many talents around the world which when they went to a competition, they was always very chanceless because the way how they cooked was not appropriate to a competition style which was existing. But I said, their food tastes so good. It doesn't look like we expect that in a competition, but it tasted so good because they cooked the style which your parents, grandparents, grand grandparents, and past generations has worked on. And I call that cultural ethnic food. Pakistan is one of the countries where ethnic food is still written in capital letters because you still have traditions and you have long traditions. And I believe these traditions have to be preserved for the future. Therefore, we founded the World Cultural Heritage Organization and Committee, which is focusing on your traditional flavors and foods from all around the world. That people from countries which are not, I would say too much inter industrialized, which are more unfortunate in terms of having uh, sponsors and money can participate in this kind of competition and achieve their glory in that what they know best, cooking on traditions and cooking as our grandparents and parents have been taught us and have been trained and have been actually feed you. If I would ask all my students now here on the screen, what food you like the most? I can tell the answer to every individual one of you without a failure. I don't know you. I never seen you personally. Some of you, yes, but most of you know. You see me the first time on a Zoom, but I know what kind of food you like most. And I can be precise. The food which you have been served when you was a baby and a little boy and a little girl, this is the food which your grandmothers and your mothers or your grand-grandmothers or grandfathers partially have been cooked for you. This made your taste palate. This made your feelings touches your, I so would say, food identity. And this definitely was for sure the best food you ever had and you will ever had, because this is what made you what you are today. And believe me, it is not only talking about caviar, lobster, oysters, wagyu and whatever. For me, food is what is the daily staples which you have on the table. That's for me real food. It might be fresh vegetables, it might be nice meat, it might be fish, it might be whatever. But always respect that. Now coming to your future, <clears throat> your future, as I said, is the education. Your future is your knowledge and this will make you at the end successful. I can see you, the worries in your faces about how you develop yourself and what the future will bring. But I'm telling you, COVID-19 not only had bad things. For me, COVID-19 had also some advantages. You might say, this guy is crazy what he's talking about. No, I'm not, believe me. Because I seen when COVID started heavily and People wasn't allowed to move due to shutdowns, due to, I so would say, being more or less isolated. I don't use the word locked up. The family stayed together again on a table and they started to talk because this modern technology of TVs 
of mobile phones has been destroyed partially our intercommunication internally with the families and the speed of development of technology has overrun us. You all have mobile phones. Some of you might have two or three even. And all 10 seconds or 20 seconds, you are on the phone and texting, messaging, sending photos and doing whatever. And this destabilizes our social integrity very heavily. I believe this is something which COVID told, told us. In industrial areas, not like in Pakistan, but in many, many countries around the world, father, mother was always working, so there was no time for cooking. And the children, this is what you are, young culinary students and the previous generations, only get fast food. And fast food is one of the killer of our industry. Definitely, it's also very helpful on the same side. But if you have time, try to make proper nice food for you and your family, for your children and for your parents and grandparents, because good food replaces a doctor and good food definitely is one of the pillars which you have to always respect. Treat your body well. People started to communicate on the table like 100 years ago and the social ISO would say communications on the table has become much better. And I like that. And this is my thanks to COVID that people started rethinking. And there was a way in going into new directions. We wouldn't sit today on the webinar talking with so many students, if COVID wouldn't have happened, we all would meet physically, definitely, which would be much better. But imagine the time efforts you are taking. In a good year, I'm spending 220 days in an aircraft. I was in one year in 76 countries, sometimes numerous time in that country. Now imagine, you go one day, you stay one day, you go one back. Let's say by approximately 80. It's 240 days of a year you are occupied with traveling. And don't think that's always easy. Because you see, wow, he can see everything. Yes, but sit 14 hours or 20 hours in an aircraft into one direction, changing the aircraft two times. And you do that every day, then you will see how you feel. Not everything which shines is gold. But for me, it's so important that I can reach the world, that I can reach young students like you. And this was made me to think to become a president, to give my knowledge to young and people who are really interested. Because at the end, we only live once. We all born naked and we go naked. And I see that this at the end will be not changing, despite whatever happens. The world has to go through several pandemics. One of them was the Spanish flu. Millions of people have been, have been dying due to this in a time which was not so advanced like we are now. But I think we have to reconsider going a little bit back to our roots, going back to where we are coming from. We, as human beings, are born to live in harmony together. And all these wars and fights around the world has been put us in really severe troubles and all for nothing. I personally don't understand why people have to fight for whatever reasons, because at the end, there will be never winners because the loss of people of animals, of landslides, of damage is so big, which can't actually compensate it with love and with whatever we believe in. So always think about this, try to avoid conflicts and try to fight in a non-weapon and non-verbal way for a better world, because we are able to make the world a better place. Now, Gotham is for you 
uh, the key element for your future. I have to go back to Ahmed Shafiq. I know him many, many years, and I see how much he has a dream in supporting Pakistan and supporting you, young people and students, which are listening now. You are the assets in that field for Pakistan. And I believe Pakistan has a fantastic culture. It has a fantastic landscape and fantastic people. You just have to live in this spirit and definitely develop that and represent Pakistan all around the world. Later on, when you are graduated, you have a chance to do so. Travel the world. I lived in 13 countries, and as actually uh, has been said before uh, by Baba, yes, I speak nine languages fluent. I speak more than nine languages, but nine languages, I speak them equivalent. If I would say my English is quite okay, then I speak nine like I speak English. And English is not my mother tongue. But I always believed in one thing. If I live in a country, I want to communicate with my colleagues in their language. It's open borders. It's breaking distances. And it makes our life much more easy. Because whatever, whenever and wherever I was in the beginning when I was at your age, sometimes you needed a translator and these translators never translated what I said. Of course they did but not with my words and sometimes not with the meaning, which I believe is the key for success. So try to learn languages. This is very important because the hospitality industry, if you're in the front of the house, even in the back of the house, your brigades and big kitchen internationally will be multinational. If you work in the front of the house, all your guests are international. So you have to have at least two or three languages which will help you to further develop yourself and to be able to communicate with everyone around you. Talking a little bit about the future. The future definitely will be not easy. You are seeing this in the moment as the world is very destabilized and unstable. But I believe with this power of the white check and with this positive energy, which you, which my other students from around the world, and which definitely all the board of world chefs and the executive committee is preaching and going for is be open-minded, be flexible, and take the challenges to come. A personal of you always respect your uniform because your uniform is your business card. It is your fingerprint. Respect what you are working for. And I see that for sure within a very, very short time, we will come back to hopefully doing our, our business without social distancing, without wearing a mask, and definitely in being together and shine together. Now, definitely what I would like to do, if you have questions, I think that would be really, really good if some of your students have questions to me. Uh, I will, uh, in one minute, uh, give back the mic to actually Baba, and he will uh, definitely call you uh, to ask questions. I believe this is a good chance for you now to interact on a global level. And maybe I can support you and I can take some of your fears and your thoughts and I can give you answers which you always wanted to get. And uh, first of all, I want to say for the first time now, uh, thank you to all of you to listen to me. I hope that first part was informative for you and it maybe helps you 
to rethink a little bit for your professional career, for your personal life, and definitely that you all become fantastic culinarians in the future. So, Baba, the wood, and the wood is on you. Well, Mr. President, uh, it's a treat to listen to you, and it's a treat to watch you. Uh, I mean, your conversation is so engaging, so insightful, so informative. But uh, there is one more thing that I absolutely like about you. Um, may I make a comment, please, with your permission? Of course. Yeah. Um, your persona, your beard, and the style of your mustaches. I mean, I liked it. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very, very much. And, you know, a funny one saying, I remember one thing because I had people from Pakistan yeah. uh, which worked with me and which are working with me. They said, you know, Chef Thomas, I tell you one thing. Before, a little bit years back, when you was working for the Pakistan military and you had a mustache like this, yeah. you get even some extra money for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. All right. Um, I have a few questions uh, yes, sure. on behalf of these uh, students. Uh, the students I have at the moment, uh, many of them would like to be entrepreneurs in the coming days once they complete their education and training and get their qualifications from Gotham. Uh, they'll be launching their own businesses. They would like to be self-employed. They would like to be entrepreneurs. So you gather years of uh, experience as an entrepreneur also, and you are uh, running a huge business at the moment. And uh, I, I would like to capitalize on this moment and would like to request you to share your thoughts as to how they can become successful entrepreneurs in this uh, hospitality and culinary industry. Mr. President. Okay. That Okay, now, entrepreneur, that's first of all a very interesting world and wood, because when I was a young boy, that was not even existing. Of course, it was existing, but it was not in our vocabulary. But some years ago, it started because people tried to be creative and people tried to uh, do something out of, I would so say, intentions. Hmm. Now, the most important thing, what I believe, whatever business you want to start, whatever business you are going to do, and where your feelings are going to, is that you do all with passion and dedication. Number one. Number two, you have to make always lists, positive, negative, which means can or cannot. And you have to be always on the positive side if you do the summary. Because if you're ending up negative on that, on your kind of checklist, you should leave the fingers of this business because you will only make a loss and this will bring you in trouble. Now, first of all, to be an entrepreneur means you are stepping into a field which is new for you, but which is actually based on your experiences. And what I want to say is always do at the best you know. Don't always think and do what you feel is what you wish to have. Go for the likenesses and the expectations of your clients because this will be your key element of success. Ask people, male, female, different age segments, from child, child, young people, average age, medium age, to elderly people and old people, what they want to have. And then make your summary of which direction you want to go. Then don't put all your eggs in one basket. That can be also fatal. You know what I try to say with that. Always... Make sure 
you have an emergency exit strip. Because if you see you run into the wrong direction, don't continue running like a blind horse into that direction. Keep always an emergency door for you. Build it in your business. Make sure you are not struggling and you are not actually going into a kind of of very severe hard times up to ending into bankruptcy. And you've seen that in the media, entrepreneurs going up to making suicide because of their business failed. Don't go into this. Ask support from, I would say, wise colleagues and ask twice or thrice before you make a decision. Oversleep your decisions and partially always also listen to your stomach because a pure business decision has to be well balanced between your personal feelings, your knowledge, and your expectations. So whenever you try to make an entrepreneur business, which I believe you or many of you have a fantastic future within this, base it well and don't think too big in the beginning. Think in a scope which is handleable by you without many workforce. Workforce is money. Money means you have to work. As much more employees you have, as much more responsibility you have, as much more money you need, as much more insurance you need, and, and, and as much more rent, as much more food cost because of the raw materials. So better make it step by step and grow the business than putting everything into a very big scale and failing afterwards. Okay? Yeah. That's fine. That would be my advice to you. Wonderful. Wonderful. One more question because I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. President, uh, as you have seen uh, through your career that there has been a lot of uh, technological advancement uh, in the world. And similarly, in the culinary world also, you have uh, got a lot of new technology uh, in the kitchens. Uh, I would like to mention here uh, the rational oven, which is an amazing equipment. It's a German equipment, as you know, and uh, this has uh, absolutely transformed uh, the way you cook uh, various things. So my question is, how has the advancement in technology impacted uh, the, the production, the, the production process, the quality of food, and the productivity of human resource in kitchens. Okay, okay coming to this point, <clears throat> Baba, now I, I want to say something yeah. which the industry will hate me for. For <laughs> me, a good chef, a good chef needs some fire, some open fire, yeah. and he has to be able to cook something in perfection. And uh, that was the way how cooking started. I believe if a cook is able to do that, then for me, he is a cook. Okay. And then I would also rate him as a chef. Hmm. That's number one. Number two, now the industry will love me for. <laughs> Definitely, this, this modern technology eased our life immense because it's so much time saving. It uh, requires basically, if you talk about the Russian, let's say it's a rational, it has an integrated brain. And this brain definitely has I mean, not grown themselves. It has been uh, programmed by uh, food specialists and by technical specialists. So that means even if you don't know anything about cooking, if you can read, I mean, basically you had to go to school before to read, then uh, with this modern technology, it's, as we say in German, being hard, it's idiot safe because everything is there. You just press a button and it works. Hmm. This is the belief of people, but it's not really like that. Because I have, I have the most modern technology in my kitchens. I have the most modern rational oven, for example. 
Yeah. I get them always for my training kitchens. And the interesting thing is I'm doing a lot of things manual and the people coming to me and they say, but you have, the, I said, no, 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 no. I know this machine inside, outside since it was born. Yeah. So I can do things sometimes, which is amazing due to my experience I have coming back again to the fire. Yeah. So at the end, I believe modern technology is very essential for the mass industry and for the big caterers and for, yeah, I so would say also really good restaurants who are uh, working on, on bigger scales. Definitely all these machineries is available in different formats and sizes, which makes the thing easy. Imagine uh, before you could also say, okay, I have, I have fresh food, I have frozen food, there was nothing else. Now you could have it with modified atmosphere, you could have it with nitrogen injected. You can have so many options on, on food, uh, not using additives, but modern technology. Of course, we talked about slow cooking. We talk about, I would so say, tools, which uh, helps us to save a lot of time. Now, for me, coming back to that, as you said, Baba, uh, I believe, and this is what you students have to 100% understand and fully uh, comply with. You have to have the knowledge how to do everything manually, how to do everything from scratch, because this is the way of cooking. What do you do one day if you are only trained on this modern technology and this modern technology fails? You are stranded and you will not be able to, I so would say, produce what you should produce. But always saying, use modern technology at the most, at its best, because it saves a lot of time. And the product which comes out is really most of the time amazing if you follow the parameters. Also, a little bit worry at the same time is definitely this modern technology is cutting off workspaces. Because if you are fully, I so would say, computerized, like we work partially in the airline industry. I mean, you could have machines which doing for you the omelets. Mm. I mean, I had people who were fully trained who could make an individual chef 600 omelets an hour, one. And that's, I so would call an omelet superstar hero, well-trained egg maker. Yeah. <laughs> And the omelette was like from a machine because he knew his trade from the beginning to the end perfectly. Definitely, if I would take a machine, it could make maybe 2,000, 3,000 or 5,000 omelettes. But I think the nostalgia and the flair of this omelette is always different than the handmade. So we have to always think what we need. But I'm just telling you, if you are able to, to cook on open fire, you should be able to use modern technology. Modern technology is your future and is the future, but never forget the pillars where you're coming from, okay? That's right, wonderful. So, I have another question, by the way. <laughs> feel free, feel free. Yeah. Uh, since there is a segment, which is a, a segment of the world chefs, uh, which is working for the development of uh, young chefs, right? And uh, most of the people uh, who are attending this session today, they are young people. They are studying culinary arts and uh, soon hopefully they'll be in the industry and they'll be starting their careers would you like to shed some light on the initiatives of world chefs uh, for uh, for the young chefs around the globe how you are impacting how you are supporting the young chefs around the globe to build their dream career in the hospitality and culinary industry okay Mr. President. first of all I want to start a little bit back because you are already in the lucky situation. You are in a faculty where you are learning, <clears throat> but there are millions of people around the world, young people who are interested in the hospitality industry. So, and I seen 
they come from unfortunate countries or not so wealthy countries that they couldn't afford to go into a school like you, lucky boys and girls. For these people, we created the World Chefs Academy. The World Chefs Academy and the pre commie program is a free learning platform where interested people can go up to a pre commie I would so say certification, which means they get the basic information and it helps them actually to come closer to our field. Now, young chefs, young chefs are our future. Young chefs are the future of the industry. And therefore we are emphasizing definitely also, and not only majority wise, but with a very, very big eye on young chefs. Young chefs, I'm just telling you, the world is yours because there are so many opportunities to learn and so many opportunities where you can actually build on. <clears throat> now, education for us is the key element in, in world chefs. We have a very nice sign up, for example, with City and Guild, which is globally well recognized. They are uh, graduating a year <clears throat> about uh, 12 million students, which is really super. And we started to make the batching systems where we are doing webinars online in the moment where everyone can register for free which I believe is very helpful. And you are getting actually a broad spectrum of information which you are needing, which you need to develop yourself further and further. Now, young chefs, we created definitely a lot of young chefs competitions because when you are young, as the name says, you have a great opportunity to learn. This learning potential is the best in your first 25 or 30 years of life because then you're grasping the most and not nevertheless to say i mean the fastest learners are the toddlers and the babies because they are completely virginized in their brain they have everything available and basically everyone around the world is more or less born the same it is simply how you train and how you develop yourself and how you get developed and educated I don't want to say that everyone is a little Einstein, but definitely everyone has the same parameters starting more or less. So it is on you and it is on your, 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 your genes how to definitely uh, go further and further. Now, young chefs, young chef competitions, which is one of the, the, the key elements too. We have the globals, which is actually the push for all young chefs going into the, the, the competition uh, segments and uh, you have seen the young chefs which have been trained for quite a long time uh, through the different association and, and opportunities have become very successful even some of our young boys they, they finally ended up in the Bocuse d'Or which is one of the key elements uh, key element there events out of world chefs I mean we are doing the culinary olympics which you can see uh, how trendy it is. We have the World Cup. We are doing the, the globals, the global masters and uh, the global pastry chefs and, and all of these, the global young chefs. And this is definitely the, the, the potential of what you have in going into the field of, of competitions. But competition definitely is not all. Young chefs have an opportunity with, I so would say, getting into courses to develop themselves further and further. We have a committee of young chefs, which are, which is run by young chefs, which I believe is important also in a big organization like World Chefs, that we are listening to the young people too, because young people, they have a different mindset. And this is so important to combine that with the knowledge of our, I so would say, experienced culinary dinosaurs like me, the old man and the young man, or the old woman and the young woman. So this combination makes, I think, the success. And young chefs, what we in World Chefs always believe in is that we are trying to give you the utmost uh, possibilities in uh, going out to the world as a young chef with I so would say also exchange programs, which we are working on now. We are working on the digital library. 
where you can definitely later on download millions of recipes because what I have seen is important for you young people. Don't only go to the internet and just think, oh, I see that I can do that. No, you still have to practice it because it is not only, <coughs> sorry, seeing something virtually. You have to work as a hand on and you have to develop that. World Chefs is there for you. World Chefs will always support you. And definitely, automatically, when you are in the National Association of, for example, Pakistan, Kotham, you are automatically a member of World Chefs, which uh, entitles you to a lot of benefits. You can go to the website, have a chance, go to worldchefs.org and see what all is possible. Because there, definitely are the guidelines out of your faculty where the future will be and where you will be going in the future. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I have seen uh, uh, schedules of competitions uh, under the World Chefs happening yes. uh, around the globe. Uh, would you like to shed some light on the, signific the significance of competitions for the professionals as well as for the students? And now, and now one second, Mr. President. We have Mr. Ahmed Shafiq with us here, along with his honorable guests here. Hello, Mr. Yes. President. How are you? Hello, Ahmed. A very nice day to you and to your team. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for giving us time and it's a really honor for Pakistan and the chefs of Pakistan and the chef of the world to have you on board and specifically students, young chefs, you know, and uh, they are very happy to see you on the screen and uh, uh, talking to you live and uh, hope to see you soon in Pakistan as soon as flights are open. We'd love to have you in the country and to, uh, to do a few events uh, in your presence. I'm grateful Definitely. for your time. Definitely with great pleasure. As I know you as a friend and as I see in Pakistan, so beautiful. I worked with a lot of people from Pakistan and they was very, very fantastic. And definitely I just can congratulate, congratulate you all to, I would say, an amazing country with amazing people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we love you uh, from Pakistan and... Uh, I'm um, looking forward to see you soon. Thank you, and we'll be keep connected. You know, please continue with your session. Thank you so so much, Ahmed, and also for you, family, and all the team. Definitely, God bless you, and definitely, you always stay safe and healthy during these difficult times. Thank you, Mr. Yes, President. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, competitions. It's yeah. a very very big thing, you know, because uh, when I was a young boy, I started actually. My first competition I did 1982, uh, which uh, changed my life, which I followed. I mean, I got more than 750 awards and, and, and a token of appreciation, what we say. By it, I, I think it's about 1,500 at the end or whatever. It's, it's a really big amount. And if you see my, my rooms and my halls, they are completely full with token of appreciations and whatever from all around the globe. It's, it's, it's crazy. But competitions will change your life, definitely. Why a competition is important? Because you learn how to work under pressure. You work... You learn how to work precise. You learn how to actually showcase what is your ability. And additionally to this, definitely, it gives you a kind of an adrenaline kick, which actually is the motivation for your future achievements. Competitions, I believe, are important due to many aspects. But the key element is, for me, how to work 100% exact. You learn how to work in the most latest uh, working techniques and how to apply them in a perfect way because a competition there is no space for error especially when you are in as an individual definitely it's your learning i would say step into the culinary competitions as an individual competitor you have all the opportunities the cost is not so much i mean this is all bearable by 
yourself and you don't need sponsors for all of this but this is the learning platform and you need good teachers you need good coaches because if you are just going there alone without the right guidance you will never be successful you will lose the interest and you will say what the shit is this saying it very rude because you will lose all your motivation so you need people who support you who help you to be always on a top motivated style and then you might go into a team you will go first with with teams which are on a, a regional area or which in a local area then you go into the regional teams and then of course the air gets already a little bit thinner and as much higher you go as much more hard it will be with trainings if you see a national team <clears throat> a good national team a successful national team, Olympic winner, world champion, whatever. They are training a lot. And I mean, they're spending a hell of money. You need big sponsors to do that. But that makes the masters of the trade. And this knowledge, if later on you are opening your own businesses, yeah. I believe are very, very essential and very helpful because this kind of perfectionism which you learn will make you a master of a trade and it will show the people that with this experience you had you start to be successful what i don't like and i'm telling you this also very frankly and it's a very good opportunity to say that you see in the net sometimes these people getting these kind of trophies or this kind of uh, certificates and they, 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 they having certificates which are not really their value zero and they are just written on a piece of paper, which I would believe saying that in a very harsh way, it should be better used as toilet paper than to post it on the internet. Because I believe a real certificate has to be earned. Definitely there are some certificates which you get as an honorary member, but many of them are fakes. You have to be very alert that you are not going be trapped in something like this. There are a lot of not real associations on the globe which pretend to be, but if you see, they are simply mailbox companies. They are taking money from you. And at the end, the outcome and the value, what you get from this is zero. And it might be only a loss of money. So when you go personally to a competition, I believe this is the right way how to achieve something and how to be really having something valuable for your professional career at the end. And coming into this, I mean, if you say I'm a master chef, what makes you a master chef? And I'm seeing so many master chefs around the world, which 90% of them, and I'm saying that very harsh, are not master chefs. They're not even a master. But they believe on a certain age and a certain things they can do, they are master chefs. A master means they are graduated, educated, going through a kind of a system, like in a university or a school, hmm. like in Europe. You make that in a short term or a long term. It costs you big money, but you have to go to a professional exam theoretically and practically that's a master chef and it's not because i'm 40 years old i'm a master chef mm -hmm. so don't get blindfolded with these things always go for the right path don't try to fake on that because soon this will come out and i had a lot of certificates which coming on my table i'm getting sometimes a day 400 500 cvs i'm getting so many mails i mean thousands of mails a day and when i see this kind of certifications which some of the people provide i'm just smiling myself i'm laughing i said you see shamefully to say their value is nothing and people have been really i so would say yeah not faked on but have been not really taken attention now, for you young chefs, please go to competitions, go to, I so would say, challenges which are under the World Organization, which are under the National Association, as they are in cooperation with our partners of World Chefs, because I believe your assets 
are the values which you're getting out of a competition, which reflects your knowledge and your talent. And I'm wishing all of you for your competitions, wherever you participate, the best of luck. And also that this kind of events will be the milestones of your achievements for the future. That's wonderful. Uh, I would like to briefly talk about uh, the noble cause of the world chefs. As you see on the professional development side, world chefs uh, is contributing immensely um, worldwide. But uh, one very important initiative uh, which was taken by the world chefs was to feed the people who don't have access to uh, food actually. So there was, there was a drive to eliminate hunger uh, from the globe. So it was a very uh, wonderful initiative by the world chefs. And I think it is an ongoing initiative of the world chefs. Uh, would you like to enlighten us on this uh, noble cause the world chefs is doing? Okay, uh, great pleasure, definitely. I mean, going a little bit out, going, I start with me personally. Uh, I seen due to my fast experiences and travels, people dying of hunger, which is absolutely unnecessary. And uh, uh, one of the initiatives of our past president, Kisor, he seen that also. And he uh, was a, a driving force in the beginning of uh, getting all these things uh, rolling into how to feed the planet, number one, and definitely world chefs without borders. We are trying to support the needy in the world. It's a completely charity-driven uh, site uh, association, a site segment of our association. Yeah. It has its own parameters, and we are always looking where our ISO would say uh, it could be a natural catastrophe or disasters like an earthquake, like a tsunami, like uh, so many uh, landslides or whatever. And we try to help people there, <clears throat> number one, with a different kind of uh, activities. Definitely we're collecting money for them and we are giving it to them. We are not keeping one, we keep nothing, not 1%. We are keeping for ourselves because we believe everything which comes in has to be given to the people. Number two, we have task force teams which are going into these regions, which actually are physically hands on. I mean, I was myself in, in several events which we were doing. At the end, we did also some charity events. The last big event, what we did shortly before uh, COVID uh, destabilized uh, our, uh, I so would say, uh, world uh, quite heavily. I was in America and you wouldn't believe, I mean, coming into America, regardless what everyone think, the most democratic country in the world and one of these countries, how many people are dying there and starving there of hunger. It's really crazy. And you see the country with the unlimited possibilities, as it was always called, but definitely there are so many weaknesses in a, in a, in a, in a kind of a structure like this, and maybe misled by a lot of uh, yeah, politicians and whatever, which uh, screwed up a lot of uh, the directions. But I believe this is so important. And you see, if you go to areas where people really uh, can't afford to have water, they are going 200 kilometers sometimes for a water well, and uh, sometimes they are going by foot 40 kilometers, 35 kilometers for water trekking mm -hmm. and taking them these water barrels behind them because there is nothing. I've seen people, they were nearly dying because of undernourishment. And I see people dying, which uh, I think is really a shame. We in the world and our resources are definitely not indefinite, but if we would respect our food and our uh, raw materials properly without throwing so much in average, uh, uh, believe it or not, in average, a normal human, human being is throwing 80 kg of edible food a year per person. Now imagine if you have 2 billion people, just to throw a figure, 2 billion people by 80 kilo. It's crazy. It's crazy. Where we as human beings are standing, what is wrong with us, with our thinking? Because 
older previous generations, if you see, who went to wars, they ate everything. And my grandfather, my grandmother, they was actually they they they, they experienced two world wars, and they was respecting every crumb of bread because they were suffering for years and not having food. And we, as sorry to say that, as stupid as we are as human beings, in this case, we are not seeing that how much really valuable resources and food we are throwing, which is good for human consumption. So it's exactly the same. Coming back to the charity-driven, let's say, uh, activities we are doing, we have to alert people how to really be more respectful and how to really treat the nature and our animals, which are our resources for food, in a right way. And the combination of all of this, how to feed the planet with our non-waste activities, it, there are restaurants, zero waste. And I believe this is the key for the future. If you see, by 2050, the world population will be double. Mm. The earth can't produce double the volume of raw materials which we are using at present. It's impossible. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not doable. With all modern technology, with all we have, it's not possible. So we have to rethink. But <clears throat> the resources are enough if we are treating the resources and the raw materials appropriate right. and I so would say correct. So always think of one thing that is a personal plea of mine to all of you. Walk with open eyes through the villages, through the cities and through the streets. And if you see needy people in need, give a little bit, even you have less, give a little bit to them. Because you never know one day you might be sitting there and you will hope for help. So always have a heart for the needy. Even if it's just a piece of bread, even if it's just a potato or a handful of rice, this can make a life. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, please continue. No, I'm okay. okay. You are the next. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a huge round of applause for the commendable, commendable initiatives of the world chefs. And I'm sure the world chefs will continue to contribute in the, sa in the same way in the future too. Now, as Mr. Ahmed Shafiq said, uh, we would like to have you in Pakistan in person and uh, would like to have live sessions with you. I mean, you being here in front of us and talking to our professional chefs, our culinary trainers, our students of culinary and uh, hospitality management. And I'm sure uh, things are going to be uh, okay uh, very soon for uh, traveling. And uh, hopefully, uh, as Ahmed Shafiq has already said, uh, he has invited you to Pakistan. And I'm sure uh, the time is not far away. And uh, uh, on behalf of uh, the Chefs Association of Pakistan, and College of Tourism and Hotel Management. Uh, the chefs here who are uh, across the network at the moment uh, available, uh, listening to you and uh, watching you. The students who are uh, with us uh, personally here, or maybe they are uh, online with us uh, on Facebook also. Uh, I would like to Thank you from the core of my heart for sparing so much of your precious, so much of your valuable time being with us online and sharing the crux of your whole life with these young people. And uh, I think a huge round of applause for 
the knowledge sharing that has been uh, done and uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, I always uh, uh, try, I want to hug you. How can I do that? Can we have a virtual hug? Of course, we're <laughs> just doing that, you yeah. see. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so, but, but that's possible, sure. Yeah, 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 sure. So uh, thank you very much once again. And uh, hope to see you very soon again, but in Pakistan. And thank you so, so much, Baba, for your heartwarming words. And definitely, uh, I will come to Pakistan, that's for sure. I will be with you, and uh, I am always definitely uh, there for all of your students, because I believe we as the World Chefs are the biggest family in the world, with these millions of chefs yeah. uh, associated to us. Yeah. At the same time, definitely, uh, I believe it will be a fantastic, fantastic uh, time in Pakistan. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to do that. Definitely, we can do some very nice uh, tutorial lessons. We can do some master classes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready to do all of this for sure, because I know uh, people uh, are really keen of this. I do a lot of this kind of activities, as you all know. And I want to do this kind of activities hands on. That means the students which are in my classes, they're always working with me. It is not just showing them. It is a kind of a life and living experience which they will go through uh, when we are doing that. Because this is the way how I believe teaching in that level has to be done. Yeah. And additionally, I want to say uh, I believe that Kotham, that you, Ahmed, the entire uh, executive board and the organization of Kotham is doing a fantastic job. I see 15 locations now, uh, which I believe it's a stunning achievement and it shows the dedication and the motivation and definitely the hard blood, which has to be put into the organization and into the philosophy behind all this. You in Pakistan, Please all stay very, very safe, stay healthy. Uh, as I said, believe in the power of the white jacket and always think positive. Where is a will, there is a way. And I believe we, as the persons and people who are wearing the white jackets, will find the right way. How to come out of this COVID-19 pandemic situation stronger, better, and I would so say more modern. So coming to an end, I'm wishing you not only a great, healthy and happy day, a great future to all of you. you. Uh, I would so say that God definitely decides at the end where, what and how, but you and we as human beings have to also take our part to it to make it happen and closing words for me is i'm wishing you students from the bottom of my heart all the very very best for the future stay always i also would say tuned update yourself with the latest informations Visit as well our World Chefs website on the worldchefs.org. There you see the newest trends, the newest actually news, and uh, for your educational part, register for our free of charge, I so would say, webinars and seminars, which are specifically made for all of you uh, to support you during the hard times. And at the same time, I wish you. A great, great, great future. I want to see you on the big platform of the hospitality industry and uh, competitions around the world very soon, as soon as we can travel. And God bless you all. Love you all. And a big virtual hug and kiss to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Mr. President.
खड़े हो जाएं जरा मेरा ख्याल है सब लोग और एक जरा जबरदस्त तालियों का राउंड होना चाहिए